guys, and welcome to the Karima Podcast, where we talk business, finance, entrepreneurship, and several other topics. I have a very special guest today, Michael Lowry, and it's a pleasure for you to be on the show today with us. And uh, man, I, I just can't wait to dive into his story, how he got started with real estate. He's now starting a construction company and doing all these different things. And, you know, I'm just really excited to have you on the show, Micah. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, dude. It's a, it's a pleasure. This is the first guest. Thank you for having me. No. Excited to share the journey and really catch up. It's been a while since we've actually sat down and had a nice conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about your journey and how you got started. How I got started. Um, so I guess I got back right with the Lord. That's what happened in the fall of 19. Okay. I moved back in with my parents. Before that, it was a factory life and just, you know, W-2. And uh, so I moved back in with my parents, and they have lots of mobile homes. So um, they were having to turn some of them, and tenants had torn them up. So we went in and fixed quite a few of them, built some decks, and um, just helped them out with that. And actually, um, they were having problems with tenants just destroying the, the mobile homes. Ooh. And they were behind money every time they had to go in and fix them all the way up. And lots of times the tenants don't pay. Um, you know, they, they leave owing money. So I was like, hey, dad, mom, dad, let's uh, sell these on a 10-year note and get a big $3,000 down payment. It also helps um, kind of put more of the responsibilities on them to take care of the place yeah. uh, since they're going to own it in 10 years. <clears throat> so that actually totally turned around one of our trailer parks where we have good quality people in there, less drugs. So that's kind of, I mean, my parents have always owned real estate and I've done remodels with them and stuff, painting, not serious like improvements, but I've always known how to do some stuff in, re in uh, real estate. So um, after that, co um, COVID happened, 2020, and that was... Um, around March and I decided I was kind of getting bored I helped them get caught up with some real estate flipping yep. some stuff and I was just bored and I started up a pressure washing company so I was always an entrepreneur and I didn't really realize that so I uh, I did business for about a year and a half but in 21 um, the summer of 21 okay the spring let's back up a little bit the spring of 21 uh, I wasn't able to pressure wash during the winter so I was bored again I get bored and I became a realtor in about a month and a half. Oh, I wow. passed it the first time and I thought that was going to be my segue to be able to get into real estate. I thought, you know, hey, I should have my own license and I'll make some commission. And actually I went into, I met Brian Pink, you know, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome guy. And uh, man, I'm so in full energy, man. Stop me if I'm saying too much. Right? Oh, no, no, you're good. This is how I got into real estate, okay? So um, Brian, I met him, and he was a real estate agent and an investor. And I was like, this is this is a combo. This is what I want to do. So he, he allowed me to um, come on to his team, and he taught me how to do listings. I was a listing agent, so I was making calls and actually doing um, an active real estate, like actually trying to go after commissions, which is still commission-based, and that's not – really what I wanted to do and hmm. I felt like I had to change myself as a real estate agent and people wanted to see me excited about the listing and stuff and I wasn't I wasn't excited about getting that commission I'm not driven to get commissions hmm. so anyway uh, that summer of 21 I decided to actually take the jump and actually start investing so I was hit on my Facebook. I was like, hey, who's got a house off market? Because yeah. I didn't want to buy one on market. It seemed like all the good deals were off market. Yeah, I, oh, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of my friends hit me up and she's like, yeah, I've got a house that we never got around to fixing and it comes with materials on the inside. It'll be easy. And she threw out $25,000 and I was like, oh, you can't go wrong buying a house $25,000. And you can. So that my first flip and I had somebody else do all the work to it. It didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but I broke even. So that's how I got started with real estate. But that first deal is super important. And um, even if it's not a home run, I, I highly recommend going, taking that action. Because like, if I never would have done that first deal, 
I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Oh, that exactly. first deal is so important to just do it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like on our first deal, we had a, had a similar situation to where I think we made, me and a partner made like three or four thousand dollars a piece. So it wasn't anything exciting. Was that a flip? Yeah, it was a flip. And worth it. Oh man, worth it a hundred percent. Because mm -hmm. if you don't take that first step, what, like how many things are you missing if you don't just try it? Like you'll, you'll learn so many lessons along the way. Like we had, we hired guys hourly. Like I don't really want to ever hire hourly again. I, I have just for small stuff, but mm -hmm. like not for a whole project. It's mm -hmm. not a very good idea. You need some type of incentive for them to get it done quickly. So like for me, it was just lesson after lesson after lesson learning, but that first flip was 100% worth it. Even if we would have lost $10,000, it would have yeah. been worth it. It's an education. So, yeah, it is. And really like, Bigger pockets, rich dad, poor dad. You can only listen to so much material and learn so much in your head. Yeah. But you got to apply it. Like all this knowledge inside your head and stuff, it's not gonna. It's pointless almost without action if you don't apply it. You know, you have to do the thing yeah. at some point, right? Yeah. A lot of people get stuck in analysis paralysis and they don't take any action, and that's where a lot of people just fall because they they just get stuck there. So, yep. Yeah. They're scared. But like somebody posted on the Capitalist Cartel. Yeah. Shout out Capitalist Cartel. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Love it. All right. And he's like, um, I have, I'm have, i seeing some great deals in my area and I'm just scared. I, I don't know if I should pull the trigger because what if I lose or what if the market goes down? You know what? Yeah, it might. It might go down. But like um, be careful. I'm not saying do stupid things, but – Think about yourself, 85 years old, you're on your deathbed, and you're like, man, I wish back in the day I had these opportunities, and I never took them. Like, what's that regret going to be later on? Oh, man, I, you know? love, I love that saying. Yeah. yeah. I think about that a lot. With Like, almost every business decision, I think about, about it that way and see, okay, am I going to regret not taking action or not trying like even if i is it worth losing the money at least knowing that i tried to do something that i really wanted to do and most of the time for me it has been so yeah i mean you can probably Take relate calculated as well. risks you yeah. know don't just do things just to do them yeah. you have to have some kind of knowledge you know but action yeah. love it action yeah so what what happened next kind of in your journey July, August of 21 is when I joined the Capitalist Cartel. Yeah. And I just got around people who were doing so much more than I was. Like, Caleb was maybe 65 million to 70 million. Yeah. He was going after that 100 million, which he got, which is Caleb Marty, by the way. Yeah. And just being around the different caliber of people, it's like kind of, their saying is, you are the sum of the five people that you're around the most so like you become who you hang around with oh 100 percent. so like just get around people who are doing a lot more than you right and that can be for you know religious things too. be yep. around people who like-minded faith and and your family is good um but anyway yeah, like for me, I have mentors for each category, really. Like, mm -hmm. so I have like my pastor is a close mentor. Uh, I have business mentors, several of them. I have people that I really look up to in the parenting space and just different areas of my life. I try to surround myself with people that I would trade places with. So that's kind of what I, I have done over the course of my life. So um, it's coming back to your question what happened next? Capitals Cartel, yes. But. Um, I started wholesaling at that point. I was calling a whole lot of people off market. And uh, 21, the end of 21, I did another flip in Web City. That ended up turning out. It took like four months, and I did a lot of the work myself. But it turned out, you know, a good profit, like 28K. That's good. So I was like, all right. But that was all I had to live on, you know, for the rest of the year. And it was one-time chunks. And yeah. it's like I had to change something. So, um after that, I wholesaled the next year. That was 22, the summer of 22. And I found two properties. One I held on to, that single family in Yosho. Okay. And I ended up fixing it up, refinancing out. And then another one, I just bought it and put it on the market. And I made a quick little profit on that, which was sweet. Yeah. 
But after that, in uh, November is when me and Caleb, we knew about, everyone knew about a deal, 24 units. And I, I made my own offers, and the guy just wasn't, he wasn't willing to take a higher offer than what me and Caleb ended up giving him because I think he needed somebody to sit down with him, buy him a meal, and just hear all of his complaints and like just talk to him like a face to face. He wanted to shake a hand, and everyone else was just throwing out numbers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is crazy, but and it, we ended up sitting down with him, coming to a deal, and that was life changing. Just one apartment complex can yep. change your life. And that was a twenty four unit, right? Twenty four unit. So yeah, fifty fifty partnership that adds twelve, so one to thirteen. Yep. And then I bought two little single families this year on each side of the 24 unit, the same spot. Man, you're so, going to own the whole road. <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. Not yet. But Well, that's really cool. Um, I remember that story, and, and that really speaks volumes because you took the extra step, went the extra mile with those people, and you met the owner, did everything, and you made the deal happen where no one else could make the deal happen with them. So that's really neat that you were able to do that. I brokered the deal. I set up that lunch that happened with the listing agent, the owner, me, and Caleb, and Caleb closes, so I knew that would I knew it would happen. Yeah, you, know. you had everything you needed. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, fast forward, now you and Caleb partnered, and you have uh, a construction company, right? That's that's correct. Yes. Yeah. So how's that going so far? It's good. I mean, we were supposed to open for business last week, but the week before that, I got a quick paint job. So like, we're right out the gate, staying pretty busy with that. Too busy to even get one of my own apartments ready <laughs> but we're working on that now yeah and, uh, and i know you did uh you did a uh p-tac unit for us and I that did. was awesome and that was before you were supposed to open as well i think that was that was on a friday yeah yeah so i painted on a thursday and i did that p-tac unit on a friday yeah yeah all right so what what is uh your favorite business book hmm business book honestly man I don't know if I have a favorite business book. Okay. What What are maybe a few of your your top uh, favorites? Just books in general? Yeah. Uh, it kind of started with Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. And I hate to say that because everybody does, but that's true. Um, the Richest Man in Babylon was pretty good for me. Business, so like traction was pretty good, and I need to go back and revisit that and because like I don't know a whole lot about business. I, I'd say that's much more my week point than real estate yeah traction just has so much to like apply like there's just like you could read like a couple pages and you're like crap i need to really go back through this and do each thing because there's just so much to unpack in Mm -hmm. and such a like for that book i mean there's just so many takeaways it's crazy Mm -hmm. profit first was good mike um mccallowitz yes i think yep yeah um pumpkin plan so the whole idea of growing um putting a bunch of seeds out and then a few of them are growing really well and a bunch of the other ones are super tiny and they're not going to be so like there's this thing up north in some state and um, there's a contest and it's a big deal up there everyone wants to grow and um, huge pumpkins and they enter like this to win a prize and it's this contest it's like a huge thing so like there's special seeds they go get the special seed have you read it? I haven't read that one yet. So, like, you plant all these special seeds, and they're supposed to grow huge pumpkins. And, you know, you have a couple really promising ones, and then you need to go... The whole idea is to go destroy all the tiny little pumpkins because they're all connected, and they're sucking the nutrients and the water and stuff from these huge pumpkins. You keep smashing all the tiny ones, and you let that big one, the biggest most promising one, you keep watering that and like you make sure it has nutrients and that actually ends up winning you the contest. So like, it's also um, Pareto's Principle. Okay. Have you heard of that? I haven't heard Pareto's of Pareto's Principle, it's huge, man. It, it states that 20% of your clients or 20% of what you do accounts for 80% of your profits or 80% of the results. Yeah. So if you can cut out the 80% of clients or customers or whatever you need to, that 80% that doesn't really do a whole lot, move your business and focus on that 20%, you grow that 20% 
and you basically have to cut some of your other clients off and focus on the people who um, really bring you the most revenue or something like that. You can apply it to almost anything. Wow, that's really neat. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've heard the 80-20 rule like over That's and what over. it is. Yeah. But the guy who came up with it, I guess his last name was Pareto, so they call it Pareto's Principle. That's cool. Uh, what What is one of the best lessons you've learned in life or in business? Oh, man. Don't do anything without God in your life. It's Amen. all pointless. It, none of it matters at the end of the day yeah. if God's not in the middle of it. And it's going to be unfulfilling. Like there's a hole in your life that you can't fill with money. And I, I need to always remember that. Like no matter what happens, no matter how big I get, I've got to remember that. If God's not in the middle of this, it's not going to matter. Yeah. You know? And and we've had conversations before where you, you talked about being able to give – you know, like give a lot of money away and, um, you live know, really on a tiny go- bit. That's what I want to be able to do. Yeah. Live on 10% or whatever and just give. I have a lot of things that I, it's in my heart to do. Yeah. Uh, fun translations for um, people who don't have a Bible in their language oh, wow. across the world because that's one of the last things that we need to do before um, Jesus can come back. Yeah. You know, that's there's a verse. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but um, the word's got to go out to all nations. So all people have to know the gospel, the good news. And then, you know, God can finish his plan. Yeah. And then uh, missionary, um, I'm wanting to um, help missionaries down in Mexico, Haiti, and Dominican Republic. We've been in connection with some good missionaries down there with our church. So I really maybe build housing for missionaries down there. I would love to be in that real estate thing. Yeah. Maybe buy them properties, renovate them, and purpose it for the church or for like schools and stuff like that. Well, that'd be really cool. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what legacy do you want to leave? I don't care about legacy. I don't want to leave anything with my kids. I really don't. I don't even care if people remember my name, but if it does come up my name, I really just want them to remember something spiritual about how I've been affected them in a godly way to bring them closer to God. And I know that's the thing that I should say. I really do. I don't care about anything, money, or leaving, you know, things behind. I really don't care about anything like that, you know? No. And I know it's not popular because... Lots of people do want to leave that legacy, but I really just don't care about it. Man, that's man, that's very like very mature. Very, uh, I, I mean, I commend you for that. Like that's that's amazing. That's what everyone needs to get to that point where they don't care about that. They just focus on the Creator. Like God is the most important thing, mm-hmm. and you really seem to live that. Like you know, I, with, I've seen you. Like in public, in different settings, and different things, and it's, I just feel like that's really who you are and what you live by. So it's just really cool to see that you do that, man. Hopefully, I can. I've got to keep it up, right? I have no choice. Yeah. Got to make it into the pearly gates, man. Yeah. That's all that really matters at the end of the day. It doesn't matter. Like you can't take any anything with you. You know, you're gonna. You came into the world with nothing, and you're gonna leave with nothing. So that's. I'm gonna leave with nothing. Yeah. I don't need to leave anything behind, you know? Yeah. And my money, I sure don't want to leave that behind. I want to, you know, hopefully set it up into trust, do the right thing there, yeah. leave it responsibly with, I don't know, charities or, um, I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. Uh, what does believe in yourself mean to you? Ah, oh, Karima, believe in yourself. Um, I don't, I don't really like believing in myself, but I have this confidence from doing things that I, I know that if I apply myself and try to figure something out, I, I know I can accomplish a lot of different things. So it's a confidence that comes from, some people call it self-esteem. When you've done stuff, you've stacked up results, you, you feel like you've proved it to yourself by doing all these things. So there's evidence behind not just saying, oh, I can do anything because you think you can, because Maybe you can't, but if you've stacked up some evidence and 
I don't know. That's that's how I think of it. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, how can people connect with you? Like, how can people kind of... I know you post a lot on social media, so what's... Uh, like, I know you're on Facebook a lot. That's what? about it. Okay. Facebook. Yeah. Messenger, you know. Yeah. I don't you have Instagram need, or anything. Yeah. You need to follow his journey because it's really cool to see him post and, you know, all the things. You're very active with a lot of different things. You're always posting about, like, the next job that you're working on or your next project, and it's just cool to see you grow, man. I like posting. People like watching a journey, and it's crazy that somebody would want to follow that. Yeah. It To me, it's, like, mind-blowing. Like, why would be somebody be interested? But there's an evolution, and it's undeniable that I have come a ways and done some cool things, I guess, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And then do you, ha- do you have a final message that you'd like to give our audience? Take action. Just do it. Sometimes you just got to do something, yeah. you know. Don't just sit around and wait for something to happen. There's not going to be a perfect deal, right? Yeah. Oh, I agree. Like, like you need to try to get those base hits. Like, everyone wants to hit a home run, but it doesn't always work out that way. If you get your first one and you break even, like... It's a win. That is a win. It's yeah. a win. Yeah. It's yeah. a win. Take action. Get around people who are doing it. Actually doing stuff, right? Yeah. That's also really big. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people want to talk big and do do big things, but they never take <laughs> the steps to actually do them. And it's like, like say say what you want to do, and then go and do it. Take the action, and make it happen. And you'll be surprised at how far you can get in life. Because that's exactly what I've done. And I mean, I'm not even, that big yet, but like, I mean, I'm still growing. But. Sure. Yeah. You don't even have to say what you're going to do. But if you want accountability, you can blast it out on Facebook like I do. And then if you're not hitting those goals, then people will know that, you know, they'll know Yeah. if you're not hitting goals. So it's like kind of puts a pressure on you. If you can put that pressure on you, it's, it's good. Yeah. So what are you most excited about? I know you have the 24 unit. I know that you're constantly growing. You're trying to buy more and more. What are you most excited about right now? The business. I'm loving the customer service and like um, getting jobs, the estimates and stuff. I missed it. Like I had the pressure washing and I loved it back then, but I saw it as a thing where I couldn't step out of that business. And really what I should have done is given somebody a 50% ownership and let them run the business for me. So I'm excited to be back in business. And really I had a cash flow problem, like an income issue where you know, I'd have to flip and I, um, you get chunks of money, but it doesn't look great to the bank. So I want like that regular income that's every week, every week. Um, cause I want to get bank, um, loanable, I guess yeah. I want to be bankable. bankable. I want to be able to go to different loan officers and show them that regular income. And they're like, Oh, all right, we can work with this guy. You know, yeah. I just need to start establishing it this year for this tax return to just get that ball rolling on top of, uh, you know, whatever cash flow is coming in from the 24 unit. But I'm excited about business right now. I really am. This thing is in a launch, being partners with Caleb Marty, like it's all good. That's what I'm excited about That's right pretty now. crazy. Yeah. You're, you're partnered with Caleb Marty. That's a big deal, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, Jason, if people don't really know you, like what can you, can you just like tell the viewers what you do yeah. besides the business you have three i protect stores is uh, that so i have two phone repair stores okay. one of them is iphone restorations in mona and another one is i protect in joplin and i have a partner on that one oh, okay and then uh so we're flipping a lot of houses i think we have three three flips going on right now one of them's really close to being done and then the other two should be done within the next couple months i'm really excited about those um and then i have uh, we just bought a nine unit yes. in Cassville, Missouri. And that has been, uh, I, I mean, I just learned so many lessons from becoming a property manager, uh, doing my own deals. And uh, I, I feel like I'm having to get thicker skin as being a property manager, but mm. <laughs> I feel like the experience is invaluable. And the further I go along with it, I'll be able to, learn and then apply different you know i feel like it'll just make me a lot tougher to where i can handle 
you know, anything that grow, gets thrown at me, and I've been praying about that a lot, mm-hmm. is being that type of person that can handle anything that happens. Mm-hmm. So it's shoved you into this situation where you, you have to learn, you have to grow. Am I right? Yes. You feel growth. Yeah. yeah. So what I, my plan is to get a VA to start handling a lot of our property management. Mm. And so I believe that if I, if I can get it set up and build the systems, then I can just grow that. And then maybe, you know, hire another VA and then another VA and then have a property ma- uh, property maintenance guy and then build a crew that can start tackling a lot of those projects and then just scale and grow. And then uh, my goal as well for this year is to buy 50 apartments, which is, you know, we're approaching the end of the year like we're, we are and then we're not. But uh, there's several deals that I'm working on right now. There's a 17 unit, there's nine unit, there's an eight unit, and another nine unit, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So uh, the potential for us to buy it all is there. I just need to figure out how to do it. I'm constantly praying about it and trying to figure out how we can make this happen. So what excites you more, the flips or the long-term holds? The long-term holds is more exciting, but I like the income that the flips bring because it's, mm. you know, it's immediate mm-hmm. and we've done pretty well on some of them. So I'm pretty sure. excited about it. Sure. Yeah. All right. So how can people reach out to you if they have a job or something they want done from your construction company? I know you and Caleb are partnered and how can they reach out to you guys? Um, there's a page, Jomo HVAC and Construction. Um, we are doing mostly just flooring and painting but just hit me up on that messenger or my personal messenger. I don't really care. I respond pretty quickly too. Yeah. I mean, you guys did a fantastic job. You guys got there quickly, got it done. And um, my my tenant was really happy you, you installed that PTAC. And so, man, he was thrilled that you guys were able to get there so quickly and get it done, and then you were out of there. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciated that, man. No 10 problem. out of 10 recommend. <laughs> appreciate it, man. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, thank you for watching the Karima podcast. If you guys want to give us a like and a share and just help us to blast out our message, guys. Thank you.